guys, hope you're doing well. Well, here we are, it's my last day of teaching here at Chatham High School. I've been here for 30 years and 27 of them have been right here in this room. Well, you know, when I put in for my retirement a few years ago, you know, you start to think about what's your last day of teaching gonna be like? And I have to be honest, I never thought it'd be anything like this. So what I thought I'd do for you today is kind of a going away gift is some of the demos that I never got to this year. You know, the classroom's been empty, and these are some of my favorites. So let's take a look. So what I have here is a powder called lycopodium powder. It's actually the dried spores of the plant club moss. And what's amazing about this stuff is it's very hydrophobic. That means it repels water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this powder and I'm going to dump it into this beaker of water. And you'll see it just floats on the top. And I want a pretty good layer of this. I'll put this aside. What's interesting is you can take your hand, this is hydrophobic, and the spores will coat my hand, and I can put my hand down, and my fingers are totally dry. If I take my fingers out, they are completely dry. So many years ago, I had this magnet sitting out on this lab bench, and I noticed a kid had taken this nail, and it was just hanging in midair. You can see right here, I can put my hand right through there. The magnetic field was holding this nail, it's just floating there in midair. So I said to the student, what you need is a pair of scissors. Because if you have a pair of scissors, you can walk over and you can cut the magnetic field lines. So what I have here is a piece of aluminum rod. And I've been doing this demo probably for close to 30 years now. This is known as the singing rods. I'm gonna make this rod sing. If you're in the classroom, some kids actually say it makes their ears bleed. I don't think it's really true, but it does hurt quite a bit. The first thing I need to do is I want to find the center of this rod, okay? I need to find dead center because I want to set up what's called a standing wave. I want to hold this at the node. It's going to vibrate on either side and push on the air molecules. I want to hold it at the node, the point it doesn't move. As a simple trick, if you have any long object to find the center, you just rest it on your hands like this and you move your hands in. And you just keep doing that and you will find dead center, that center of mass. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rosin, i got this music department, and I'm going to put this onto the rod. Okay? And this is just to increase the stickiness. And I'm going to take my fingers and move them along here, and I'm going to cause the, vib the rod to vibrate. So here we go. Let's see if it works. Okay, so the rod is vibrating, pushing on the air molecules, and of course that makes the air molecules push in and out on your eardrum. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but you know, let's, I feel big, so why not ah, use something like this? Okay, this is I think a little over eight feet long. It's a grounding rod from a home. It's aluminum. I'm gonna find, uh, actually let's put the rods in there first. Let me just find out approximately where center is. It's around there. Put some rosin on. And you can see pieces of, I don't know if you can see it, but pieces of the rosin are breaking off as I do this. And I think that's pretty good. And what we're going to do, hold it again. Shh, notice one hand moves, and it moves, and it keeps going back and forth until you find dead center. I'm a little bit off, so just move a little bit this way. Let's try this. There we go. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is see if this works. Let's see. Do I have enough rosin on there? This is one of those demos I created years ago that never quite worked as well as I would have hoped. And mainly the reason is I use bowling balls. And you've seen small versions of these on people's desks. They're called Newtonian demonstrators, balance balls, whatever. They're designed to show conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. Now in my case, I have five bowling balls. They're tied by these cables that go up into the roof of the school. And I have turnbuckles at the top that allow me to adjust these balls up and down and left and right or front and back from your reference point. But no matter how hard I try, I can never get them perfect. So I just kind of show you what it does. It doesn't work perfectly, but what the heck. It's the last day of school, right? So here we go. The idea is if I pull one ball here, I can only get one ball coming off at that end. So I pull this one back, boom, one pops off. Now theoretically, this middle one shouldn't move. If I pull two back, boom, 
phone to pop off of it. Again, the middle one shouldn't move. But, you know, it's just, you know, fun to play. The kids love this, even though it doesn't work perfectly. They pull three back, watch what happens. I flip three back, three back. If I do four, they'll switch back and forth for four. And uh, the easiest one to do is five, right? Um, you can also do three and two. Right? They'll switch theoretically. If this is working perfectly, they have three, 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 and it's flipped back and forth. It's a nice little demo, actually quite a big demo, uh, and it's one I've had a lot of fun with over the years, but never quite worked as well as I had hoped. So over the years, I've done some really cool air pressure demos, but this one is my favorite by far. It's a basic rubber glove that is just filled with beach sand, and it's attached to a vacuum pump that's off camera. And you can see how floppy it is. I'm going to lay it down here onto the table and I'm going to turn on the vacuum pump. And this is very noisy. So here we go. And you'll notice it gets very rigid. The sand grains are locking into one another. But what's really cool is you can take each of these fingers and stretch them out. And you start to get these little joints here. It looks almost like a skeleton. And what's even cooler is you can take them and bend them into any kind of weird shape you can think of. When you're done, Simply let the air back in, and it goes right back to the way it was. Well, here we are, the last demonstration of my career. In fact, this is the last demonstration I do in every single school year, and it's one of my favorites. It's one of the few that I've actually created myself. Almost all the demonstrations I do all year, including the ones in this video, belong to other teachers, and I have to give them credit. But this one actually has a story behind it. I had a student who sat up near the front of the room many years ago, a guy named Dagan Miller. I'm guessing he's probably around 40 years old now. And every time he did a demonstration, Dagan would see to me, say something like, you know, that's fine, but I'm not going to be happy until you set your tie on fire. And he'd just say this over and over again. So one day I'm sitting at home, I said, ah, you know what, I'll set my tie on fire. But I wanted to teach some science, and I came up with this demonstration. So to do it, what we need is rubbing alcohol. This is just a bottle of alcohol I got in the supermarket. I need a little container like this. I have some aluminum foil to catch spillage. And most important, since I'm setting my time fire, is I have this old tie. This one goes back to the 1980s. Okay, I'm going to take this and put it in here. Now, normally, if we're in class, I pass this around to one or two kids to let them prove that it really is alcohol and it is rubbing alcohol. And what I'm going to do is pour some alcohol on there. And, you know, I just pour the whole jar in. What the heck? I'm at the end of my career, right? Let's get it really saturated. Here we go. I'm going to put this aside, get it out of view, and I also have a container of water as my fire extinguisher. So what I'm going to do now, and you can see actually the water is turning blue, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but the dye is coming out in the alcohol. But I'm going to take this out of here, and we're just going to put it down on the aluminum foil. And what I'm purposely going to do is take this uh, alcohol and get it out of sight, because I don't want to put the burning tie into the alcohol to put it out. So I'm going to put this aside, and now I have my water. So now what I'm going to do is take a match, and I'm going to light this on fire. Now, since I'm the only person in the room, I have to go turn the light off, but I'll be back in a second. Okay, through the magic photography, I'm back. Here we go. I'm going to light the match. Go. Everybody loves fire, right? Then we're going to set the tie on fire. And you can see the alcohol is burning. And, you know, you can play games with this. You can, yeah, kids always love when I do this. Notice I have my safety goggles on just in case. And make a great plan. I try not to set myself on fire. Well, I think some people will be, right, will be rolling over laughing if that happened. Okay, here we go. It's a nice fire. Okay. And what I'm going to do, now if you notice, there's something very unusual here. I'm going to take this, put it in the water, and put it out. Okay, so we have the lights back on, and here is my beaker with the tie and the water in it. And something is very unusual when I take the tie out. If you look, other than it being wet, it's still perfectly intact. Nothing has happened to this tie. There's clearly a trick going on here. You definitely saw the flame, so the tie should have burned, but it didn't. And kids give all kinds of guesses when I do this, but really what's going on has to do with the alcohol. This bottle was not pure rubbing alcohol. It was half alcohol and half water. And as you know, alcohol burns very easy. That's due to its high vapor pressure. So the alcohol is burning off the surface of the tie, but it's not hot enough 
to burn off the water and basically therefore you can't burn the tie. So the tie stays intact. Now there's a trick year, you know, that's been around for decades where someone takes a dollar bill, they immerse it in rubbing alcohol and they set it on fire and of course the dollar bill is still intact. And that's all I did is I took that trick and I modified it uh, for the tie. And it's kind of a cool thing. At this point, I would grab a box of ties, pass one around to every student and teach them how to tie a tie. But there's no one here, so that's not going to happen. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with the big box of ties. I'll just take them home and maybe someday I'll find a use for them. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed those demos. Those are some of my favorite demonstrations from my entire career. As to what's up next for me, well, I'm not exactly sure. I don't have any definite plans. I do have a book called The Flipside History coming out this summer. It's my third book. And just like the other two, it's a collection of true quirky stories that history's kind of forgotten. We'll continue working on my useless information podcast. I'll work on my house. I'm always remodeling that, and there's a lot to do. I figure I'll be done when I'm dead. I always joke that. And uh, I did promise I'd bring my invention in at the end of the year, but clearly that's not going to happen. Now, what I'll do is at the end of this video, I'll give you a link to another video that I made about a year ago so you can see what that's all about. As to working on the invention, well, I think that might be DOA. And the reason for that is the economy's gone sour, and I can't imagine anyone investing in my invention at this point. Now, what I won't miss about school is A, getting up at 4.30 each morning to be at my desk at 7 a.m., and then grading paper after paper after paper. For the first time in my life, there'll be no papers to grade. I, wanted, I definitely want to give a big thank you to the staff. You know, you always hear about how awful teachers are and how lazy they are and how they sit down in the factory and smoke cigarettes and just complain about everything. But honestly, I haven't seen that in the 30 years I've been here. The staff here at Chatham, not just the teachers, but the support staff and the admin, are incredible. They're amazing, they're hardworking, they're caring, and they do everything for the kids. Honestly, it, it's the best group of people I could have ever worked with, and I really do want to thank them. Now, as to you and all my students I've ever had, I'm really going to miss you. That's the part of this job I'm really, really going to miss. Now, if you think about it, I've had maybe a couple of thousand students that I've had come through, the, through my classroom over the years. Every one of those people has had a big impact on me. You know, as a teacher, my job is to take the knowledge that I've learned and give that to you. But you don't realize in the 30 years how much I've learned. I am definitely not the same person I was when I walked through that door 30 years ago. I'm a very, very different person. I'm an intellectually curious person who just wants to learn, 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 learn. And it's amazing how much I've learned from students. Their enthusiasm is just incredible. And uh, I really do thank you for that. Now, to everyone, this room is just a classroom. But to me, it's, to me, it's been my home for the past 27 years. And I'm really going to miss it. My memories are in here. But most of all, I'm going to miss all of you. It's, the, it's students that keep you young. There was a teacher, uh, Mrs. Agostino, she retired many years ago. She was a chemistry teacher. And she once said to me that teaching keeps you young. And I really do think that's true. And I want to thank you for everything you've done to make me who I am today. And I wish you the best of luck at everything in the future. You guys are great and, uh, you know, I just hope everything you ever dream of comes true. Anyway, I'm just going to take, you know, one last look around, grab my stuff, and then I'm out of here. So, anyway, take care, everyone. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to watch a short video on what my invention is all about, be sure to click on the video link on the left. Also, click on subscribing and find out about future videos that I post. It can be anything from crazy true stories, how-tos, various projects, or whatever. Take care, everyone.